Hello and welcome to the third floor of Cork and Isle Science Building in the Department of Chemistry at SUNY New Paltz. Uh, my name is Megan Ferguson and I'm the Chair of Chemistry and I wish you could come to a regular accepted students open house and see uh, the chemistry facilities for yourself but in the absence of that then I'm going to give you a quick virtual tour of our department and our facilities. All right, we are still in the hallway, and as you can see, then students have painted a uh, pictorial periodic table really all along the left-hand wall and a little bit on the right. We'll see that uh, a little bit later, um, just for fun. Uh, what we're going to do is, looking down at the hall, then on the right side is all of our classroom lab space, office space, and then the left will be lab. So we're just gonna take a tour through here. So uh, this is the chemistry computer lab. It is a public lab, uh, but pretty much the students using chemistry classes are in it, largely because there are a whole bunch of uh, software programs specific to perhaps your organic lab classes, things like that. Um, we have a great view of the Shangkung Mountains out the window. And uh, although students do largely work on the computers here, then this conference table, nothing much to look at, I realize, but this is actually an important place because uh, students, we have tutoring for both general chemistry and organic, so that happens here, except for now when it's starting to happen online. So we will move out here. Our next stop actually is at these various posters. Uh, we have different research posters that are uh, aligning the walls. And these are all posters that are made by our research students. Uh, the majority of chemistry majors and biochemistry majors do, uh, do research with a, um, with a faculty mentor and end up presenting at various places. So we have two local conferences every year that we present at, um, as well as many of our students do go and present at national um, conferences. This is just a basic classroom. We've obviously got tons of those on campus, but this is the one where a lot of your smaller chemistry classes would take place. We have a chemistry little club room where students can basically store their stuff and uh, microwave their food, use a mini fridge, stuff like that. Um, but it is not currently open. This area is the faculty office suite. Not all of our faculty are here, but four of them are. And you can see there's a small table here and a larger table there, both with blackboards available. This is the most common place for office hours to take place. Um, oftentimes, especially for organic chemistry, there may be uh, six to 10 students all here at once asking questions. Um, and oftentimes for the smaller uh, groups, then we just go right here. All right, uh, continuing on. I like this one, it's really cute. We're going to go into the labs now. And this is the general chemistry lab. So you will be spending your first two semesters here if you choose to come. Uh, you can see there are a lot of computers here. There's 12. Uh, students tend to work in pairs. And part of the reason the computers are here is because we use a lot of ocean optics and vernier equipment uh, to have pH meters, conductivity meters, pressure sensors, things like that. You may be familiar with some of those things from your high school curriculum. Um, we also have uh, little UV viz, so absorbing light uh, sensors that connect here. Um, other than that, we don't see too much on the benches, largely because they're either in the drawers or they get brought out for weekly labs. Um, there are some hoods over on the side. Hoods are used to suck in air from the, uh, from the lab and vent it out. So if you have something that produces noxious fumes or things like concentrated acids, then that's the safe way to handle those. Um, moving on into this room, this is one of our prep rooms uh, and sort of storage labs. So you can see all of our uh, chemicals that are stable for regular shelf storage live here, or most of them. And then there are some of the other ones. Um, but here is where our 
instructional support technician makes the solutions that are used in various labs. There's glassware washing. The light will turn on in a minute. No, it won't. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, various glassware sources and things like that. Moving on, uh, this lab is really our upper level chemistry lab. It is used for analytical chemistry in the fall. It's used for experimental p-chem, uh, experimental physical chemistry in the spring. It's also used by some um, other courses that are offered as electives. Right now we have uh, an advanced inorganic and organometallic chemistry being offered uh, that makes use of this space. Uh, we had polymer chemistry at one point that was making use of some of this space. So again, computers and fairly clean benches at the moment, but we bring out whatever we need for the given experiments. We have a whole bunch of analytical balances here on the side to weigh things out accurately. Um, this is a research lab. So our physical chemist does research with her students here and they do a variety of uh, reactions involving oligonucleotide DNA. Almost all of our fancy instrumentation is in here. There are two major instruments that are elsewhere that I'll talk about later. But uh, we have this FTIR, um, which helps to identify different organic compounds. Um, this right here is a GCMS, or a gas chromatography mass spectrometer. It's a way to uh, analyze various molecules that can be uh, evaporated, volatilized into the gas phase. This flame atomic absorption spectrometer, which is good for elemental analysis, uh, quantifying metals. And another one that, uh, not, that also was used for metals, this is an inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometer. Um, that little black square right here uh, will have this glowing plasma, kind of like what you see through um, a welder's torch. Um, and that also does metals analysis. Here, we have two HPLCs, that's high pressure liquid chromatograph. So there's this one, and then there's a newer one over here. Um, this, along with the GC mass spec, are probably the two most important pieces of instrumentation that you would learn and use. All of our undergraduates do use uh, these items. Um, in most job opportunities and graduate school opportunities, that you would definitely um, be making use of some of those types of instruments. Over here, we have Professor Miles Wilkin at Barnell, and he's using his glove box. Oh, yep, and waving too. Um, so he works with compounds that are quite oxygen sensitive. So hence, he is uh, working in there. Anything you want to say, or are you busy? Uh, it's fun for me. Um, <laughs> I get to have my own little world in here. I'm making reactions right now for a class, an advanced inorganic class. They aren't here to collect data on their reactions, so I'm running them for them. They're converting ethanol, to butanol and other larger alcohols through a catalytic process using iridium, we're going to see their results. Awesome, thanks. Um, this is actually Miles' research space. We have a fluorescent spectrometer, so measuring compounds that will fluoresce light. And something that some of you may be familiar with already, over on the side here we have uh, one two for that black box um, with, with this, and three uh, UV visible spectrophotometers. So these are ones that measure uh, usually a liquid solution's absorbance of light at different wavelengths. All right, we will move on into some other research labs. The general structure of this is that large labs or classroom labs separated by research labs. So in here, this is the research lab of one of our two organic chemists. And so he too makes extensive use of his hoods. There's some various uh, glassware for uh, refluxing in there. This is our new biochemist research lab and he's brand new this year. Uh, so he's still uh, getting things up and running but he does have two research students working with him already. 
all of us have, uh, I would say, two to six students working with us at any given time. And finally, this is our organic lab. And you can see there are no computers in here. Organic solvents don't play well with computers. But uh, we do have various little setups with a uh, heater with a sort of sand bath to heat reactions in a sort of round bottom flask. And students will make all sorts, synthesize all sorts of, of chemicals, compounds, and then analyze them. So um, there are various ways to analyze what they've made. Um, the most common way is to analyze them by NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. And this is something actually that all chemistry programs that are um, official must have an NMR. So this is pretty much the end of our uh, third floor. Our NMR is on the first floor and we also have an atomic force microscope. So I will take you down there. Okay, here we are downstairs in our NMR room. This is our 400 megahertz NMR, the computer station there. Uh, essentially, you have samples in tubes like these that get loaded up there. And this is an instrument that helps to identify different types of, uh, of compounds and functions. Final stop is the basement for our atomic force microscope inside this big bat cave. Uh, that is to protect the instrument from you rather than vice versa. Uh, so inside it is very vibration sensitive, so we keep it in here. Uh, effectively we have a big microscope with an AFM head that uh, this is really used to get tiny, tiny level topography of samples or press into them to find out how firm they are or various physiochemical um, properties of those. And there's the computer that monitors that. So that wraps up our virtual tour. We did skip over the biochemistry lab, which is a space that we share with biology, as well as a couple of our faculty research labs. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at the address on the screen. I know many of you are choosing among several colleges, but I hope you will seriously consider our programs here at SUNY New Paltz. Thanks so much for watching.